uh, named Jen Stark. So I'm going to show you both these videos. They're pretty quick. Um, it's basically breaking down pop art and then showing you Jen Stark's style. And then I will show you how to get started. Bananas, my red coat, tomato soup, and comic books. But what do they all have in common? Two little words. Pop and art. Pop art is more than an art movement. It's a lifestyle, a craze, a way of looking at the world. But what is pop art? Pop is young, bold, and fun. This is life in the 40s. It's a bit grey. In the 50s, people wanted plastic and glamour. They wanted to have a good time. Buy more, spend more. Don't just watch TV, be on TV. Now you can listen to the Beatles and Elvis, watch cartoons, eat popcorn, drive cars and become famous. Now it was pop art, all about culture. After all, pop art means popular art, art for all. But who were the pop artists? Richard Hamilton, this guy, said pop art was low cost, young, witty, glamorous and mass produced. Hamilton made collages using imagery he found in glossy magazines. Lifting images from films and advertising was completely bonkers at the time. This is one of the famous Marilyn portraits by Andy Warhol. Andy, Andy Warhol, this guy, see, a cool guy. For Andy, art was a product, the same as a production line of Coca-Cola bottles or Camel Soup. He liked to use bright colours and silk screening techniques to produce art on a huge scale. Pretty clever, I say. Pop art is revolutionary. Pop art is the competitive. Who could you watch first? Warhol had his advertising. Lichtenstein had his comic books. Pelosi had his collage and Minnie Mouse. Wait, let's go back to Lichtenstein. He used Bende dots to make his artwork look like comics, like the ones you get in newspapers. Female artists were also rocking the pop art trend. This is The Only Blonde in the World by English painter Pauline Boaty. Pauline added fun into her art and was a bit of a rebel. Girl power, Pauline. Pop art came out of the gallery too. Nicola L took this big red coat around the world to get people to get involved with her performance. This made a real pop crowd, not the celebrity faces in other forms of pop art. Pop art can also be found all over the world. In Iran, Parviz Tanaboli was a sculptor and painter. Like other pop artists, he made his art out of things that looked like they could be thrown away. In New York, Jean-Michel Basquiat, he mixed it with hip hop and street art. Pop is on TV on the radio and on the internet. Like right now. Does that mean I pop art? Well, there's one thing Andy Warhol and I can deal. I don't know where the artificial stops and the real starts. Okay, so that's just a quick breakdown of what pop art is. And again, it's been around for a very long time. It's all about popular culture. Um, I'd say Andy Warhol is probably the most famous pop art artist if you've um, studied him at all in elementary school. Uh, we are going to be moving into using Jen Stark, who is also a pop art artist, but also a street artist, graffiti artist. So it's kind of mixing the mediums or the uh, movements together. And I'm going to show you some of her work, which her stuff, like she predominantly does drip art and you'll see what she's making here in this art installation um, in, I believe it's Chicago. So give me one second. The joy of this day is sharing.
shared by many. The extraordinary group of curators and artists who believe that the arts initiative was important and ultimately they made it so. Thank you for the incredible talents that each of you has brought to this day. A lot of my work is kind of meditation based, even though I don't like try to make it that way. I like incorporating science and mysteries because I think mysteries are so beautiful and I want that to come across in my artwork. It's very freeing to be able to go crazy on a wall and not have to like abide by you know, your sketch, you're like, this has to be here and this has to be here. I want to do this, but I want it to just drip all over the escalator and sort of take it over. And they, you know, the arts initiative was like, do it. Just do whatever you want. Go for it. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> Right now, I'm penciling in big psychedelic waterfall. <laughs> when the windows won't let you out, you'll stop. So the finished sculpture will hang in between these two floors. It'll be sort of like this colorful wormhole. And when you're standing at a certain point, you can look up inside of it and you'll see like this crazy rainbow gradient tunnel. It's all white right now, but I'm going to paint each layer a, a different color. There's 48 layers in total. It'll be like one solid color each ring. Oh, you look so scared. <laughs> 
sculptures and the, the murals are just the, the conclusion of my meditation. All right. So that is basically the style of her work, which is, I her work is awesome. So move to the next. Here are some more examples of her work. Um, she, I don't know if you noticed in the video, but like her nails were painted the way she does drips. It kind of surrounds her whole life. MTV uses her work as, as um, with their logo. She's hired all over the place. So Jen Stark is really popular with her work. Here are some other pop art pieces. Um, so remember, pop art is popular culture. So it's anything that's popular going on. Like the cool thing is like soda cans or like Mickey Mouse has been popular culture for years because it just continues. Um, your job for this part of the project, here's some more, you can see like the Simpsons, that's popular culture, is you're going to choose a pop art, pop culture emblem, symbol, um, whatever it is that is popular in your life. I know we all have our own likes and our own interests. And you are going to create, as I go forward, um, the opposites of each other. So you're going to take out a sheet of paper from your sketchbook and you're going to fold it in half. You can see this, the holes up here. So you can uh -huh. see, can you guys hear me okay? No. Did you say no? Yeah. Okay. So you can't hear me okay or you can? Okay. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So you can see the holes at the top. So most students do it horizontally and they fold their paper in half and you're going to choose again. You're gonna, it's, it's a silhouette. So it's an outline. You can tell there's not a lot of detail to what you choose and you're going to draw it pretty large on the left side of your paper. Then the entire background of your left side is all Jen Stark style drips you are going to have the exact same symbol on the right side and then the inside are the drips. So it's opposite of each other. Okay, so again, you're going to choose, this shows you how to do it. So let me go actually to this video here real fast. I'm gonna mute myself. Today you are going to create an artwork based on artist Jen Stark and her drip designs. With a blank sheet of paper, prepare by folding it in half, creating a crease in the middle of the paper, then unfold and flatten out the piece of paper. With your paper now evenly divided in half, using a pencil, draw your selected subject. Notice how I'm placing it on the left side of my paper. Keep your pencil lines light. That way, if you make any mistakes, you can go in and erase easily. You may choose to free draw like I am in this demonstration or trace an image using a resource from the internet. Once you're happy with your image, take your pencil and push very hard, retracing your design and darkening the lines. Fold the paper.
paper back in half. If you look closely, you should be able to see your drawing very lightly through the paper. Pushing very hard with your pencil, trace right on top of the design that you see. This is going to copy your image on the right-hand side of your paper, creating a mirrored image. In order for this to work, you must make sure that you are tracing right on top of your design. Once you finish tracing your design, open the paper back up. You now have your two subjects mirrored on your paper. Take a Sharpie marker and trace both of your subjects. Now it's time to add the drip designs to your artwork. Starting on the left-hand side of your paper, place a drip design behind your subject, filling in the background. In my case, my drips appear to be behind my paw print. If you are unsure about how to draw a drip pattern, please practice on a scrap paper first. Refer to the Google Classroom assignment for further help and assistance with Okay, so obviously it's Schoology, not Google Classroom. This is the basics of what you're doing, okay? Then you are going to add all your color to it. And it can be any colors you want in any way that you want. I have here are some like examples of Jen Stark drip drawings. You can see how they have like some starbursts that or kind of looks like starbursts to me or sunbursts coming through um, circular drips. Like I have also attached here, I have a gen, like a bunch of coloring pages that you can look at um, to give you different ideas of the drips. But this is not due until next week. But this is our next part of our next step in our project. And again, there are step-by-step -step instructions. Here are some ideas. If you're like, I don't know what to do, think about what you enjoy. What do you like? There's food, there's, there's holidays, there's animals, there's logos and brands. And it's just the silhouette, so it's just the outline. Okay, and there's like step-by-step -step picture instructions. There's all sorts of examples of student work in here. Um, I love the ones that they do the black as the opposite. They look really cool. You can see all the different examples of student work. Who has questions right now of how this works? Anybody? Yes, Mario has a question. Yes. So for the uh, one we have 